Chicago. Padres have scored just four runs in their last 39 innings, and they're now down 2 0. John Garland, the two out base knockoff. Woody Williams, first career RBI, Juan Arebe scores. Ramon Hernandez throws out Joe Creedy at third. Garland, 11 and 2 in his last 13 starts, dating back to last season, looking to become the first 10 game winner in the AL this season. Bottom two, Hernandez at the back. How many times do we show a guy throwing a guy out of third and then hitting into a 4-6-3 double play? Well, whenever we edit that way. Bottom four, Ryan Klesko at the bat, and Garland strikes him out. A.J. Pruszynski throws out Jeff Blum trying to steal seconds. So that's a strike him out, throw him out, double play. Bottom seven, now 3-1 Chicago Padres threatening, though. Khalil Green lines to center. Aaron Rowan. Well, he had his 13-game hitting streak stopped when he went 0 for 4, but we get two looks at that. He robs Green. The White Sox win 4-2. Garland becomes the AL's first 10-game winner. Joins Dontrell Willis of the NL. Chicago, 41-19. and Best record in baseball. Well, Tomo Oka was scheduled to start for the Nats on Friday, but he turned his back on Frank Robinson when Robinson came for the ball in his last start. That's not good for job security, so Friday the Nats turned their backs on him, trading him to the Brewers for 2002 All-Star second baseman Junior Spivey. Mariners taking on the Nationals Friday night. There is Spivey saying hi to his new teammates. That's Rick Short, his first major league at bat. He spent 12 years in the minors. 12 years he's been waiting for this. Bottom five, Nats down 2 nothing. RPI single, Brian Snyder scores. First hit in RBI for short. Top six, leadoff batter Richie Sexton. And that is way gone off TJ Tucker. Upper deck shot, Sexton's 14th. Mariners up three to one. 10 of the Nationals' last 11 wins have been come from behind. See if they can do it again. Spivey on the pinch run. Marlon Byrd pinch hitting. Mike Morris has trouble getting the ball out, so Spivey scores and the new guy already contributing. Bottom eight, runners on first and second. Vinny Castilla, not known for laying it down, sacrifices himself to move the runners to second and third, so one away. After an intentional walk, the Spivey loaded the bases. Schneider driving in two. Jose Guillen and Nick Johnson score, and the Nats go up 5-3. Next batter is Jamie Carroll. Squeeze it! Spivey scores. Nats get six in the eighth, and they're going to win at 9-3. They've won eight in a row and 11 of 12. Now, they've been great at home, 22-9 and nine in their inaugural season at RFK Stadium. No team in the expansion era has posted a better home win percentage in its first season in a new city. The 2004 Expos were 28-31 at Olympic Stadium and 7-14 and in San Juan, Puerto Rico. Let's go to Shea, Mets, and Angels. Before the game, Angels skipper Mike Shosha had an illegal flashback. Remember, Shosha hit a two-run homer against Stock Gooden in the ninth inning in game four of the 88 NLCS, and the Dodgers would go on to win that series and the World Series. Back to reality. The Angels got Vlad Guerrero back from the disabled list. Team went 10 and 8 in his absence. He went 3 for 5, but makes the Kaz Ishii whiff list early. Sixth inning. Ishii holding lefties to 0 36. 1 for 28 against him this season. Top six. Mets up two. Lefty Darren Erstad. Boom, boom. Game tied. Two run shot. Erstad's third. First in 45 games. Same inning, same scenario. Another lefty takes the Sheehy for a ride out of the park. This time it's Steve Finley. And the Angels win 12 2 on Greek night at Shea. First Friday night, Chin Min Wong on the hill. Mark Grigelanik on first pickoff throw. Gets away from Jason Giambi. So Mark Grigelanik is going to boogie all the way on over to third. Following the error, Albert Pujols at the plate. Over to Derek Jeter. Nice grab, jump throw, one hops Giambi. He can't make the scoop. Grids Atlantic scores 1-0 Cardinals. Yanks helping out plenty. Bottom third, runner on second. Jim Edmonds up. Base hit. Pujols will come around to score. Throw cut off by A-Rod. They have Edmonds, but the ball gets away from Giambi. Throwing error on A-Rod. Take another look at it. And Giambi with his hands full at first base. Five batters later, 5-0 Cardinals. Two runners on, two out. Jason Marquis over to Robinson Cano. Error on Cano, the Yankees' sixth three-error game this season. Joe Torre, what's going on? It was an ugly game. Uh, we didn't play hard enough. Uh, we didn't do anything to help ourselves win, and um, it was an embarrassing game. I think he was holding back there. Bottom six, 7-1 cards. Paul Quantrill facing Pujols. And
and there's no need to chase that one. Pujol 15th on the season, and the Cardinals win it 8-1, and the problems continue for the Yankees, especially away from Yankee Stadium. They weren't able to build any momentum. They dropped their fourth straight series opener on their 12-game tour of the Midwest. The Yankees have scored just 10 runs in the four series openers, and they've committed six errors, including the three in this game. Red Sox and Cubs at Wrigley. That's Nomar's new home, and these are his former homies. Red Sox, first time ever playing at Wrigley Field. Last time these two teams met was the 1918 World Series. Cubs played it at Comiskey because they thought Babe Ruth would tear up Wrigley. Well, the Cubs are tearing up the Red Sox. Jason Veritek, after a Bronson Arroyo, throws behind Aramis Ramirez. Vitek throws it into left field. Derek Lee scores 4-1. Lee, 2-4. for four. He's batting 380. We're still in the third. Two on Michael Barrett. Deep center, Johnny Damon. Is he wearing his PF Flyers? Nah. Barrett, three for four, three RBIs. Ramirez and former Red Sox great Todd Walker score. 7-1 Cubs. Arroyo, four innings, seven earned, two homers. Top five, Greg Maddox against Mark Bellhorn. Good game to watch. Maddox, six and two-thirds, seven hits, three earned, five strikeouts. And this against John Halam in the bottom of the six. Maddox has just raised his average this season to a buck 92. The home run. His fifth of his career, Derek Lee talking about it. The worst thing about that is we're going to have to hear about it all year, you know. He thinks he can hit, now he hit a home run, so we're going to have to hear about it all year. He's already been on me. Did you hit a home run today? Or Ramos, did you hit a home run today? So he's already talking. Well, when you haven't hit one since 1999, come out and tell the people thanks for thanking you. John Halama gave up four earned in two innings, including this. Jerry Burnett's his second of the game, tenth of the season. Cubs win 14-6. Two touchdowns, beats two field goals. Maddox, 16-2 two all-time against teams from the American League East. Royals and Diamondbacks now, crazy game. Top five, Russ Ortiz to Zach Greinke to the seats. The pitcher dialing long distance. Royals try to cut down the lead. It was 7-2. Top eight, 11-3. Now Ruben Gotaya with Mark Tien on base. Off the pole. Fair ball, two-run shot, fourth of the year for Gotai. Royals chipping away at the lead, 11-5. Still in the eighth, bases loaded for 10. David DeJesus comes in when he gets the walk. It's 11-9 now, top nine. Matt Stairs up two men on and two outs. Base hit to score it, Joe McEwing. Royals come all the way back to tie it at 11. Bottom 10 now, score still tied for Troy Kloss. And this is Bananas. That's B-A-N-A-N-A-S, walk-off home run for Gloss, fourth of his career, first for Arizona, and the Diamondbacks survived the scare. That would have been a terrible loss, but they take it. Bottom second, Indians up 2-0. CC Sabathia to Moise Salou. Sabathia. Nice play. Eight innings work for him. Five hits, two earned runs. He struck out six. Top six, Brett Tomko to Ben Broussard. In the left, Pedro Feliz, not quite Mays, but Still pretty good. Top nine, Al Levine pitching to Ben Broussard. And the center, Jason Ellison extending to make the play. We take another look at that. Giants, great defense and a losing effort as the Indians take a 10-2. Meanwhile, for Warren Barry, here's Pedro Gomez. In the meantime, back to baseball. Twins in L.A. to face the Dodgers for the first time since the 65 World Series. Bottom four, 5-4 Twins. Jason Grabowski facing Joe Mays. Down the left field line, Shannon Stewart says, give me that! And then into the wall. Take another look at it. Good news for the Twins is that Stewart held on to it. The bad news, that he would leave the game with an injured left wrist. There was drama. Bottom nine, five all. He stopped Choi at the plate facing Terrell Mulholland, the only twin alive during the 65 World Series, but Choi leaves him for dead in this one the pole good for the walk-off home run third of the night in terms of walk-off home runs second home run of the game for Troy Dodgers the Orioles are visiting Cincinnati for the first time since 1970 and longtime Reds fans are glad Brooks Robinson isn't returning with them if you're too young to remember it you saw it Robinson grabbed everything in sight in the World Series and also hit two of the O's 10 home runs in their five game win Elrod Hendricks is there for the return trip he hit 364 in the 70 series and now he's Baltimore's bullpen coach that series was also notable as the first fall classic on artificial turf. This series is notable as the only one featuring three players with 500 home runs, Baltimore's Sammy Sosa and Rafael Palmero, and the Reds' Ken Griffey Jr. There they are, three members of the 500 club making history on Friday night. 
Sammy, Junior, Rafi ready for action. Check the numbers. Sosa 580, Palmero 559, and Junior 510. Sosa's got more homers against the Reds than he has against any other team. Top third of Friday night's game, Melvin Mora. He's now got 89 career home runs, showing up the big guys. His 13th of the year, Orioles up 3 0. Bottom eight, Reds down 4 2. Here's Junior at bat, and it's only right that one of the big three sends one out of the yard. Sammy Sosa trying to reel it in to no avail. Solo shot number 511 of his career for Griffey, but it wasn't enough. Orioles going to win it 4 3. The 500 Club trio went 3 4 11 in the ballgame. Brewers and the Phillies, Charlie Manuel trying to lead the Phillies to their fourth straight win. Top four, Lyle Overbay on first, Carlos Lee at bat. Lee base hit into the hole between short and third. Let's take a look at what happened here because we have the technology. Jimmy Rollins goes to cover second and that opened the hole. Great execution of the hit and run. Next batter is Bill Hall over to Brett Myers. He makes the play at second, but Overbay scores and it's 2-0 Brewers. Bottom four now, 2-0 Brewers. Jim Tomei with one on. And one gone off Victor Santos. Two run shot for Tommy. His fifth of the year. Game tied at two. Bottom nine. Game tied at two. Two on for David Bell. And it's time to bounce in Philly. Walk off home run for Bell. His third home run of the year. Phil's take it. Motion. AJ Burnett, Florida pitcher, winless in his last six starts. Top first, he got Dave DeLucci there, and then Mark Teixeira there, and then Richard Hidalgo here. Burnett striking out the side. He went seven and a third, three earned, 10 Ks. He left with a 5-1 lead. We're in the eighth. Todd Jones trying to close it up. One run game. Rod Barajas singles. Lance Nix scores. Game tied. So Burnett's effort wasted. He gets no decision. Bottom eight. Bases loaded. One out. Doug Brokale walks Luis Castillo on four pitches with the bases filled. Alex Gonzalez go ahead run and then three batters later. Oh let's get lifted. Mike Lowell grand slam off Brian Schaus. First homer in 45 games. Marlins 12-5. Center's not top 10. Number 10 from the PGA's Booz Allen Classic. Round two, Brett Wetterick. He's got one foot dry and one foot all wet. Chip shot. Hurries up to see where it landed. Not a bad effort from the water. Don't forget to dry your feet. At number nine, number nine, Rangers Phillies. Rod Barras popping it into foul territory, and that's where Pat Burrell says, I stay, but the ball does not stay in his glove. Dropped right out. Get him some stick him. Number eight, Red Sox and Cardinals. Abraham Nunez into left field. Uh-oh. Could it be another Manny moment? Uh, got up in time to make the grab. And it's always an adventure for Manny in the field. At number seven, Devil Rays Mariners, former Hawaii winning leaguer Randy Wynn grounds it to short, and Julio Lugo throws it high. Jolly Green Giant could have caught that one. That's an E. Number six, Orioles and Tigers, Rafael Palmero over to first. Chris Shelton, looking like a guy in a foxhole, but he's gonna lose the battle here. Ty goes to the runner, even with the fielder on his stomach. We got more follies at first base. Number five, White Sox Rockies, Desi Relaford to Paul Canerco, can't get it out of his glove, so he just tosses the glove. Pitcher wasn't ready to catch the glove with his glove, and well, Relaford safe at second. Number four, Giants and Mets, Marquise Grissom, that's well hit. But uh, not exactly well played by Carlos Beltran. He, well, let's just say he probably wouldn't forget about that. Play. At number three, uh, Scott Podsednik is going to wish he could forget about this. Grady Sizemore popped to left field, and Podsednik, okay, is it there? Is it there? Is it there? This is a severe communication breakdown between him, himself, and him. <laughs> Sizemore went for a triple. Number two, Twins and Diamondbacks. Watch the young man in the telestration. Look out! <laughs> he was not going to get hit. Well, that dude's going to have bad dreams, and not nearly as bad of dreams as this reporter is going to have. Greg Beach from ESP, uh, AP. Uh, <laughs> uh, you, you didn't, uh, they didn't, uh, Let's come back to you, man. Yeah, let's come back. <laughs> <laughs>